Hey guys, welcome back. So in the last tutorial we finished up by adding a scoring system to our little game, creating a custom function that can take various integer inputs, and playing around with some instance editable variables. Today we're going to expand upon that and talk about when conditions, and more importantly, how and where we might want to implement them. But first, what are when conditions? Well, a win condition is basically the things that your player must do to progress in your game. For us, that might be collecting all of our coins before moving on to a new level. So before we start figuring out the nodes we have to link together for that to happen, we need to figure out where we're going to put this script. So if we open up one of our coins here, and we look at our overlap event, we cast to our third person character, we have this function in our third person character that adds up our score, and then we destroy our coin. Now, it might seem like a good idea before we destroy this coin to add some script in here where we maybe have a new function and we check to see if our um, player score value that we can pull out of here, if this is somehow equal to the total amount of coins or points that we could have gotten from this level. But in order for us to make that comparison, we can't just use this coin value, right? Because this value here is 1, is the default. But remember, we also change this value um, on each individual coin in our level. So this value is going to be different for every coin. And we really want to know if the players collected all of the coins. Now, we could use things like get all actors of class and search for our coin. And this will give us an array, basically, of all the coins that are in our level. And then from there, we could pull out each one's coin value. We could add it together and get a total value for this and then compare that to the score. But that seems like a lot of work to do for each coin. Because remember, every coin that we put in our level, we're going to have to run this script. So we don't really want to put that kind of... Um, importance, you know, to figure out if the player has collected all of the coins on such a low-level blueprint like the coin itself. And also, for this we may want to, you know, transition to a new level when you've collected all the coins, but we could put coins in another level and say after the player's collected 100 or 200 of them, we want to open up a door, have a new enemy pop up, whatever, many different things that you can do. And if you're going to have different things, all using these same coins, then you're going to need to have script in each one of these coins that tells, you know, first figures out what kind of a level you're playing, if you're going to move to another level, if you're going to get a new enemy, whatever, and that's all going to have to be held within each one of these coins, and you may have a hundred in the level, and that's a lot of extra code that you don't really want to have sitting around in all of your coins. So this is clearly not a good spot for it. So we will get out of our coin blueprint. The other thing some of you may be thinking is we could put it in the level blueprint. Now if you click here, you could see it says open up level blueprint. Now this is a pretty high level blueprint. It's easy to make references to any and all actors that are contained within the level. So we could definitely use a get all actors of class here and pull out all of our coin actors and basically do what what I was just talking about in the coin uh, blueprint themselves. But here we'd only have to do it once in the level blueprint, and then we would add up all of the coin values um, from each individual coin that's in the level, and then we would have a total score. So we would basically be creating a variable over here, total score, and drag it in like this, and say add integer plus integer, and then we would drag this out and say set. And then we would have to have some kind of an event that fires this off, so that every time we overlap um, a coin, we would be able to fire off, we'll just say custom event, my coin event. This would work 
we came in here, just so you guys can see what I mean, say get, and then from here we will say get coin value. And we could do off of this a for each loop. Let's actually let me get rid of this. And basically loop through each one of our coins here, get the coin value. And if you drag out and hold Alt, you'll get a set. And let me Control C, Control V. Basically, we would add coin value here to our total score. Link this up. And this would give us the total score from all of our coins that are in the level. And on our My Coin event, what we would actually be doing here is we would need a reference to our player character, which isn't going to be hard to do in the level blueprint. And we can easily cast to third person or whatever your player character is and create a reference here by right clicking and call this player ref. So once we have a reference to our player, we can get the player, we can get the score out of the player, and then we can compare if this equals the total score. And then off of this, we can have a branch. And we can hook up our event to this branch. And off of true, I'm just going to print a string that says open new level. And off of false, we'll print a string that says not done yet. And we can have this run off of, if we right click and say begin play, we can have it cast, drag off of here and say get player character. Move this over and move this over here and hook this up like that. So this seems like it would work pretty well. We get a reference to our player character. We get all actors of class, which are our coins. We loop through each one of our coins. We find out what their value is, and we add it to this variable that we made called total score. And then we set total score. So this will give us the total value of all of our coins in the level. And then we can have an event here where we check the player's score against the total score. And if it's true, we'll open a new level. And if it's not, we won't do anything. We'll say not done yet, and the player will have to keep going around and around looking for coins. The problem with putting things like this in the level blueprint is if we minimize here and we actually go to our coin, Right after we overlap the coin, we go cast to our player, we add um, the coin value to the player's score. What we'd like to be able to do here is call that function or call that uh, custom event that we've made in the level blueprint, the my coin event. But if any of you have tried this before, you'll know that you can't drag off here and say cast to level blueprint. This is not a cast to the level blueprint. This is something else. So even if we go in here, we can't say get total score. You see, there is no variable for total score because we aren't actually in our level blueprint. So our normal way of getting access to variables that we have, like here, total score in our level blueprint, is through a cast node. But you can't cast to the level blueprint. So how are we actually going to be able to call this function here, or this custom event, so that we can check our player score? Well, you can't. There's no way to call a custom event or anything to call something in the level blueprint from the player character or from another actor or your coin actors or anything. Level Blueprint works one way, 
It can tell things in the level what to do, but nobody can tell the level blueprint what to do. So you're kind of stuck here that you can never call this event when you want it called, which is when the player overlaps a coin. So what you would have to do, if you really wanted it to work in the level blueprint, you'd have to minimize this, and you could find all of these references. So if you hold control and click on all of your coins, and then go back to your level blueprint and you right click and scroll here, you say, you see this says create references to four selected actors. So we can click that, and now the level blueprint knows about all of our coin actors. And off of each one of these, you can now access the coins themselves. So the level blueprint can call things in the coin, which brings us back to, do we want to put this script here, oops, this kind of stuff, and all of this, in our coin because we can call the coin we can call a function or a custom event in our coin from the level but not the other way around so this isn't a really good idea because this brings you brings us back to the first point that I made you're gonna end up having a lot of code stuck in your coin that you're not gonna be using in most of your levels so what is the answer to this solution or what is the answer to this problem? What is the solution we're going to come up with? So I'm going to delete these references. And I'm going to delete all of this stuff in here. We'll get rid of these variables. And we'll compile and save and just get out of the level blueprint itself. And I'm going to compile and save our coin as is and we're not going to use our third person character. But what we're going to do is we're going to actually create a new actor. So I'm going to right click here, go into blueprint class, and create an actor. And this I'm going to call win conditions. And this is going to be a new and unique way to use actors that we haven't talked about before. But what I'm going to end up doing is scripting, double click in here, we don't need anything here in the viewport, but we're going to script all of our logic for what we consider a win or when we want our player to progress within this blueprint here. Okay, um, we're going to get into that in the next part of this tutorial. I just wanted to let you guys know what's coming up next. So we are going to be using this blank actor. And like every other actor, we are able to drag this into our world. And just a little teaser for you guys, just the way we are able to reference our coins and our enemy actors and everything, and they can interact with our third person character and vice versa. We're now going to have an actor called win conditions that will be able to interact with our coins and our player character. And we're going to be discussing in the next tutorial how to go about doing that. Okay? I know we didn't really do much in this tutorial, guys, but I thought it was really important to just kind of explain um, the hierarchy for how we're going to set up this um, blueprint for our win conditions. And hopefully you guys listened to that and it made sense. And in the next tutorial, we'll actually get into creating um, the scripting for this win conditions and testing it out. So stay tuned for that one. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on the latest tutorials. All right, guys, we'll see you later.